Hey guys. Pre recorded in the live, people. Okay, we got cameras everywhere. This is all the way behind the scenes. We're live. There we go. And when you look around, you guys say what's up. If you are in the chat room right now, go ahead and comment and let me know that you see this. Can you hear me? How's the volume? I am literally supposed to be on vocal rest. Hi, Chandra. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys a second, make sure you're on correctly. Sorry, I gotta move some more. I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> Me and this microphone. Hey. I got a new setup, y'all. Hold on. All right, all right, all right, all right. We straight, we straight, we straight. We on, we live. I can see now. I didn't like the way I had it set up. I had to change it. Hi, Beatrice. Hey guys. Hello. Latanya, what's up? You guys, can you hear me okay? Let me know you can hear me okay. I'm not supposed to be talking loud. All you gotta do. I ain't gonna say it. See, it's all up to you. It's your turn to. Hey guys, Beatrice, Asia, Angela, Chandra, what up, what up, what up? Well, we got Texas in the house, Florida in the house, Savannah, Georgia. Listen, Georgia, that's where I was born. So my mom and my sister and my grandmother. Remember, wherever you are in your hair journey. Jump into it. Please pull out. Don't compare yourself. You don't have to be a social media superstar. Everything we do, everything you see in Short Hair Boot Camp, you can do it. Take some time, but you got this. You got this. Okay, so now, I don't like this setup. We're going to go with it. Listen, sorry if I just made you dizzy. Um, so today, we're just going to play. Listen, Short Hair Boot Camp Live, if this is your first time, welcome. Today we're gonna play uh, with a real life client. I mean, they're all real life clients, <laughs> like they're fake. But today we're gonna play with uh, just being in the salon. We're gonna just literally just go through a simulation. A lot of you guys, the pre-recorded information is so self-explanatory. So it covers a lot. Um, we went over relaxers, partials, the 90 degree cut. Um, doing a longer bang. Uh, we went over the foundation a lot. And you guys know I be fussing. Because some of y'all be asking me questions and I can tell you're not going over the foundation and you're waiting for a live class. And guys, repetition builds a muscle. So when you lift weights, it, it's like you have to condition yourself. So if you have not conditioned or been repetitive in just step number one, which is the consultation, or step number two, which is diagnosing what the client needs. Or step number three, which is application of all, like there's so many things that the client may need. So if you haven't perfected each step and you're looking at your results going, mm, I'm going to the next class, shiny object, shiny object syndrome. Um, I just wanna invite you guys to play it in uh, like a big boss, play like a big boss and jump all in and really get into repeating the steps until you've perfected it and then move on. Some of you guys have asked about dry waves, and I look at your styles, I can tell you can't get the basic waves right. And it's no shade. No shade, just truth. Y'all know I be like, I'm just real. That's just it. So what you want to do is perfect your mold, because a mold will hide a lot of mistakes that I see on some of the pictures. 
Okay, so your mold needs to be right. Then you want to perfect your cut because the cut will last after the mold and the style is gone. Okay, and then anything else that you want to put on top of that, go for it. So, again, sound check. Can you guys hear me? I need a yes in the comments. Yes in the comments if you can hear me before we just go all out. I'm hot. Let me turn on the air. I need yes in the comments. Yes in the comments. I don't see any yeses. Not gonna start until I get some yeses. Make sure we not froze. Make sure nothing's going on. Okay, Mazoki says yes. Elizabeth says yes. Angela says yes. Simone says hi. Hi, Simone. Beatrice says I have a picture, but it's frozen. Beatrice, you may want to go refresh. Beatrice says yes. Got it. So she's good. Um, Asia says my first time watching live. Am I the only one not getting a picture? Um, if you don't have a picture, just refresh your screen. Can everyone hear? And here's the right, the better question: Can you see me? <laughs> Can you see me? Oh, technology hates freaking love it. I gotta find another company. This company is making too many changes. I want to make sure that you guys can see me. I think you guys are good. All right, so we're gonna get started. So today, like I said, we're gonna go through just um, a live class, literally just teaching everything that we already have been going over, okay? Guys, even in the Bible, they say there's nothing new under the sun. So it's not that we want to reinvent the wheel in order to get to your, listen, have you guys seen the Holly Berry? Did y'all see the Holly Berry class? Have y'all watched it? Cause you know, I realized, when I said to myself, I said to myself, self. And then myself was like, hey, girl. And then myself was like, what's up? And I was like, well, self, the reason why everything changed and blew up for you and has continued to grow is from one damn day. And then myself was like, well, girl, what's that? Girl, shoot. Instead of trying to reinvent Get people to understand and do the exact thing that blew up your business. And I said, mm, so what, 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 so what do you have in mind? So then I was like, well, so listen, all you have to do is teach them the Holly Berry factors because you mastered that. So here's one thing about classes. And I am speaking from experience. I have purchased Literally, I, I didn't finish college. I got a full ride scholarship. I did not finish. I took it for business management. But the amount that I've spent a year on continued education, I've taken so many courses. And they weren't college courses. But there was just so many courses that uh, literally I got shiny object syndrome. I thought, oh, I need to go do this. Well, I need to go do this. And then I'm going to add this. And then as soon as I'm taking this course, then this course pops up. So then I buy that one and then I'm, I'm excited about it for that week. And then I lose momentum and I need something else. So then I go get this one and then I lose momentum and then I need something else. And next thing you know, there's five techniques on the table. I've mastered none. And so what I wanted to do for you guys and what I told myself is that I need people to understand the factors that literally to this day sell short hair. Because you can go get a lot of stuff that are like tactics, okay? There's like a, you can add something here, add something there. But what you need to understand is that there were specific factors and specific steps that I took day in and day out for years, and it never changed. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. Hi, Johanna. Um, um, just under, we're going to have that conversation of consistency and management and, and per perfecting, which there's no such thing as perfecting, but really mastery 
mastering each step, the basics, because the basics is what wins. Guys, you look at when, uh, what's that girl name? Kiki Palmer, cut her hair. I was like, and I'm very good at dissecting hairstyles to figure out how I can get the look, which I told you guys and shared the technique with you guys. Um, it was a 90 degree haircut and it was like the same. Like there are certain things that are constant, no matter what all this trendy stuff you see, even paying for Naja like the river, get there, it's a 90 degree haircut with some waves on the side. Here's the thing, the waves are your prerogative. You swirl them up real good or do like, it's like, please hope y'all can hear this. But there was nothing magical about it. It was very basic, right? And, and no downplay on that. I'm just saying like every, the, the key is to understand that the basics will get you to success, okay? And whatever success looks like for you. So for me, Holly Berry, the Holly Berry factors is what created the six-figure business. It's what has continued. For, I literally dropped the six-figure business in Dallas, moved to LA with three months rent saved up and no plan, and then picked it right back up because of the Holly Berry factors. If you don't watch ish else in this whole thing, master the Holly Berry factors. That's my sermon. I'm done. Um, Asia says, I can't hear, but okay, y'all, I'm confused. Can you see or hear me? I'm gonna bring up the model. I need to know if you guys can see or hear. Hopefully you can. Okay, come on, model. Model time. Everyone say, hey, Sophia. Sophia, Sophia. So she is one of my absolute faves. And you can see them chatting and coming. You can basically say hi. She is such an inspiration to me. I always get blessed with clients that are like my mentors. <laughs> I love this lady. She's brilliant. And she has decided to play with us today. I oh, kidnapped yeah. her. <laughs> we changed. Hold on, y'all. This better thing you're doing. Let's go get her. Can you see? Make sure everybody's, um, you guys can see. See in here. The company changed. Whatever they changed, it's so inconsistent. I'm gonna find another company. Hello, everyone. We said hello. She's being <laughs> modest, guys. She is such a beast. She's brilliant for all my CEO members. Oh my god! Like I just want to. I always want to interview her because she's just freaking brilliant. But when you got brilliant people, they don't just come around like that on a regular. You got to stop them. <laughs> So, hello everyone. They're saying hello. Yay. Awesome. You look amazing on camera. So, all right, guys. So, she's agreed to play with us for the morning. And we are going to just go over um, the conversations. I just want to, like, kind of go through what. You know, just a realistic just in the salon, day in the salon. Because I know some people just like the line feel better, um, which I'm going to give to. So, guys, guess what? She's natural. She is natural. And so a lot of you guys have asked me about um, doing a natural model. So she does have natural hair up top. And what we do is we partially relax um, her sides, okay? So turn to the side for me. So as you can see, we just partially relax her sides. Wait a minute. Oh, those things are here. Hold on, y'all. This is no way. No way. No way. No way. No way. So I'm going to put on some love, base her, and then we're going to have a conversation about when you need to take when your client wants to do something drastic. So she wants to, because of my schedule, <laughs> relax her hair, which I don't know that I approve. But hey, I understand her why. So I can't get this. Oh well. Housekeepers. So I'm gonna use um, a firm. Y'all know I love Influence. They just slow shipping and I ain't got time. Influence, if you ever see this, can y'all please get a California, a West Coast? Because I don't like waiting and it takes too long. I'm not going to give you $100 in shipping because that's just not fiscally responsible to my business. But today, 
we're going to, I don't have any video, it's just circling. AJ, it may be where you are, your signal. So, we are going to, you'll see guys, I know she doesn't look relaxed. Her cut is bomb. As you can see, even, you always can tell if a cut is good is when you start messing up hair and still look cute. So guys, master your cutting. She has a mixture of um, short to long from like the Becky with the good cut. And she has um, 90 degree on the back. But I have to do a lot of texturizing because her hair is very thick. And so we don't want her to have what we call helmet head. So um, I'm always, you know, trying to be mindful of that. But it's just so, I love when you can just have a bad quote unquote hair day and the haircut still look cute. So guys, run your hands through your haircut before, they, before you get going. Because you can also, in this moment, if she needs something additional, this is the time to tell her like, you know what? I need to go through and shape the cut. Let's take a little off the front for the summertime. Ooh, you can get some highlights. Like, there's a million things that we really could do with her hair. So I love um, this full bang. And there's I just see so many options from a photo shoot perspective. Like, I, we've never even done our hair with her bangs in her face. Ooh, see, you get this. I don't know about you guys, but I get inspiration when I just kind of play in the hair. So I encourage you, do not run your business where you burnt out and you don't have time to play in the hair. My customers know, like, I don't have 100 people. I don't like to, because I have to play. Hair is playtime. It becomes more than that. I, I don't, I can't do it. So, and it gives so much value to the customer. I mean, she can speak. How long have you been coming to me? Since August or September? Last August or September. And we've done so much. We get treatments. We've done highlights. We've done permanent color. We've done the partial relaxers. We've cut it short. And then, and then it, her hair grows so fast. Because we remember we cut it shorter, and then boom, it was back like in three weeks. And so, but we play. And the whole thing is when you make someone feel comfortable, you guys, a lot of times you, you're so con concerned with packing a million people. When this one client, if I really had to calculate, I don't know, she spends a lot of money with me. So, and it's no brag. It's just, you know, it's just a fact. And the thing is, I'd rather play with a few and give them all of me than talk to a hundred people and give them the fast, quick, hurry up, sit down, get in and out version of me. Because then I don't get to play with them, you know? So guys, the best part about your business is you can make it your own. Um, I couldn't. Asia, make sure you push play. Chandra says hi. Pamela says, I see and hear you loud and clear. I love it. Hey, Pam. Just watch all the videos before work, the Halley Factor. I love it. Hi, everyone. I see and hear. Good. Toya, I love it. Toya is such a girl. Toya is amazing. Toya is a life student. Like, literally, she's just like me. She literally lives education and does whatever I say to do. She'd be like, I did it. <laughs> Done. And she gets results. Well, you didn't mention I trust, right? So I trust you can do whatever you want to do to my hair. I trust, trust you. Big deal. And then let's talk about why you trust me. Because you give me quality hair. Boom. My hair is always, always healthy. I, I Googled. I actually am from the East Coast and moved to California and had hair down my back a year, a little over a year and a half ago. Oh, and I cut it all off and could not find anyone to maintain short hair on the West Coast in the LA area. And I Googled and found Lakeisha Shell and Got here immediately and would come to her every week if she was around. <laughs> and you live where? I live near Santa Barbara, so I'm approximately two hours. Um, it's crazy. About 50 miles away. She be on the road like it's nothing. <laughs> you guys, so for all of those who, there nobody's in this area, blah, blah, blah. Several of my like best clients come from two hours away, literally. Bakersfield, they're, I mean, they're, they're coming because here's what that tells me, they in your city. You know, some people fly in. I got a lady come from Houston. I'm like, girl, why would you come all the way over here? She's like, nope, I just like you. And here's the thing that's really cool. They often say, 
I like your spirit on your videos. So guys, we really got, I mean, hair is so much self-development that needs to happen in the in your in within you as well as you're working on your business. Now, what I did was just go ahead and base her scalp, right? Um, nothing to it. You guys, this is, you already know, we've had a relaxer series. But I just base the edges and then the area where I'm going to do the partial. And what I'm going to do is just comb on with a small tooth comb. I'm going to comb on um, the relaxer just to get the hair in the position that I want. Okay? Make sure you guys have good lighting there. So, look down for me. All I'm gonna do is literally just comb on the relaxer. And when, I, when I'm working with her, what I like to do is you guys see, I'm not touching the scalp. I've talked about this, and when I did Kim Comes to Visit, we used the spatula. Same thing. The only reason I'm not using the spatula is because her hair is kind of crumbly back here. So I want to use the comb to get the, the gist, uh, the, the basic first application on without compromising. Literally, I just know the area that we want to focus on because we always cut the back. It's okay, guys, for all those um, who are fearful because she does have permanent color. She also gets a um, treatment every time I say, hey, you need to get a treatment. Like, you got to have, you have to build up trust because you don't want your clients thinking you're just trying to be money hungry. Some of y'all have a money hungry kind of energy. And and it's no and there's no I just been around stylists that have been in the game for a long time. They frustrated because they haven't figured out the money conversation, right? So every time a client comes in, while they may need the treatment, you sound like you're thirsty. So they be like, "No, nah, I get it next time." Or you sound like, you know, you really want them. You want the money versus the care for their hair. So the focus is always, no matter what love, the focus is always the client's care. What's best for the hair? What does she really need? And the thing about educational marketing, which is what I do on my YouTube channel, um, which is how all these people find me when they Google, the thing about it is that you want to uh, let the customer know that their hair is the best, is, your, is in your interest. The best version of their hair is what you're interested in. And so, and so when you educate them on how you can get them really nice, healthy hair, they're more prone to just sit in your chair and do what you say. And it's not because you're money hungry, it's because they're here, you're doing what they need. And people try to be involved. <laughs> people are tired of being involved. Save the edges. Okay, so all I do is kind of get the first outline going. Look down for me. And I'm going to go back through. I'm not touching the scalp as I'm combing. You guys have seen people do this all the time. But what I'm doing is just kind of getting the hair lightly in the order that I want it. Hold your ear down for me. And so, I'm trying to not get in front of the light. There we go. Let me just get down here so I'm not in y'all way. Okay. So guys, she's natural. So what I'm doing is just focusing on the part. Why am I focusing on the outer? Somebody tell me why am I focusing on this area? I am not getting this on her scalp. Just combing it on. Why am I focusing on this area? I'll wait for you guys. I'm using a comb because I don't, I want to be really, really specific. Okay. 
Pero yo... See, with the comb, I can get all up in there. Don't be scared to use the product. And be specific. That's the area you want to lay, exactly. Because this is the area that's going to um, give, for natural, when you have a lot of length on your natural hair, you can get away with this. This is kind of what I call the anchor area. With this area being straight, when I apply the foam wrap, um, it basically, there we go. When I apply the foam wrap, I, it ain't, the hair anchors in the straighter area. And when I say anchor, when that curly hair hits that straighter section, it kind of, it, it latches on and it anchors and it just, it helps keep seal the deal. And you will see that in a second. So I'll have to do another video with Sophia because she wants to get a relaxer all the way. So now that Now that everything's on, I'm going to make sure. Yep, you go ahead. I'm going to make sure. Make, how's your scalp? Always do a scalp check, guys. Your client loves when you just check, just check up on it. Like that Beyonce song. Oh, I can't like it like what you see. Y'all remember that video? She was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I love me some Beyonce. She was popping. And so here's the deal, guys. Here's my take on relaxer. There's a lot of uh, takes on relaxer. I say use relaxer. Don't let relaxer use you. So I'm not into bone straightening, thinning out people's hair textures. I think that's stupid. Let go. I, that ain't how Jesus made us. This product was like, no, nah, that's a no-no. And it's not even healthy for you. So I do believe that relaxer is the devil. <laughs> But I don't knock someone who wants to get a relaxer. But if you look, if I, if I split this, you can see there's no relaxer on the scalp. All I wanted to do is the outer layer of this hair. I'm going to make sure that it's straight. Okay? And guys, if you look in the relaxer in the uh, Milady's book or, or cosmetology book, that's all, this breaks down the bones of the hair and straightens it. So, you good, I'm just wiping. So, the thing is, you have to use, just like you drink responsibly, to me, it's the exact same. A lot of you guys, I've seen so many stylists here in LA, do a relaxer on someone and then go smoke a blunt. I think that's hilarious because they're outside getting high in life and the client is in here losing edges. Like, that is ridiculous. What irritates me is clients put up with that. Because if, if everybody would just stop coming, the industry would shift dramatically because stylists would be like, either they're going to say the business ain't good or they're going to step up. And so I'm committed to helping everybody. Like, we got to step up. Clients don't put up with crazy stuff. Stylists don't put up with crazy clients. And everybody just do their part. Cause this hair game gets very interesting. So at the end, I go around her, her front area and I'm just watching the hair. I can tell when the hair is breaking down. I left her front for last because she had lightener up there. So I, I'm not just going to, I know that area has um, more potential her hair is not gonna break but it has more potential too and i always operate in worst case scenario so guys when you're doing hair you want to operate in worst case scenario so like don't just do the routine pay attention to the client like i got one client i cannot start her relax from the back have to start in the front and then go to the back like you got to pay attention to the client because every client has different needs 
I can see that this needs a little bit more breakdown time. But for her, uh, let me tell you guys what I'm going to do for her full relaxer, because that's, that's pretty much a virgin relaxer. The, the kind of care you need to have when you're transitioning someone from natural to relax. I've seen so many videos where people are just making that person's hair bone straight on the first round from them coming from natural. Y'all, I'm such a nerd. I literally study the hair follicle. I've been looking at it. Did you know that if you, when you, did you even know when you're neutralizing hair, when you neutralize the hair, you actually have to, uh, the, the hair is still shaping and forming with the neutralizer shampoo. So if you actually take that hair and comb it, like I've been telling my cousin, he's been working for me forever when I was in Dallas. And we, when the neutralizer is on the hair, we're still smoothing. We're still just combing that hair through, combing that neutralizer through. Because the hair is still forming and breaking and shaping it. The bonds are still doing their thing. So guys, it's every process, every part is not just, I'm at work, let me just do, throw this relax, I'll rip clean, let me just not, whatever. You have to be emotional about this <laughs> in a good way. This is a human. This is their hair. These are their follicles. You know how you would feel if you do something and take somebody's hair out. So I'm stressing this because, yeah, I've just some stuff I'm like, mm -hmm. we don't want to tear people's hair up. And coming from natural to relaxed, I do not believe you should take a relaxer and sit on her for an hour and let them have straight hair. Is it pretty for a picture? Yeah. Is it healthy for the hair? No. So anybody that I've transitioned, and I've transitioned a lot of people, we take our time. I put the relaxer on. I monitor. If a product line tells you don't leave the relaxer on past the time, why in the hell would you teach or tell someone to? That's my, that's my like, why would I do that? Because... The manufacturers, and I know guys because I went to the factories where they make the relaxer. I literally had to put on my gloves, my little hat, my suit, my chemical suit, and I walked through where they make the shampoos for these major companies. For I mean, I've seen it and been there, and they're so like the people who make it are like, don't break our rules. There's a reason. We don't know all the reasons. Here's the thing: there's a lot of stuff we do in the black community that works, but scientifically it's not right. And so what to me met too many older women who did something that we do in a black community for 20 years and all of a sudden boom they fall and they're like well I don't know what happened I've been for 20 years people love to put times on things and time doesn't always uh qualify or or justify just because you did something for so long that's a certain by itself just because you were in a relationship for 50 years don't mean it was the right one just because you, you know what I'm saying, been at the church for 10 years don't mean that's a church you need to be at. Time might be up. Time might have never been there. But anyway, my point is, pay attention to the hair. It'll tell you what it wants to do. I can already tell that that broke down so much faster than this. Why? Because there's more permanent color there. So, how's your scalp? Good. So, guys, ask the entire time how they're doing. And don't trip over plugs. And... <laughs> And literally just watch the hair because it'll tell you. I love this. This is ready. This hair we've been doing the partial on for since August, you know, or whatever, sometime last year. I love it. That's ready. That looks good. I'm very satisfied. So when I take her from natural to relax, I am not going to bone straight it. I'm just going to do the first round. And I, what I do, especially because she has color, when I really put the relaxer, before I put the relaxer up there, I am going to put a treatment on the hair before I put the relaxer on. And so what's going to happen is that treatment is going to go into her hair first. So the breakdown is not as strong. Because I want to gradually do things. I don't like to shock the cuticle. I don't. So shocking the cuticle means blowing it up so fast and then bringing it back down. It's a shock. So then your hair dries out over time and you have brittle, breakage, whatever, whatever. I know, guys, it's very trendy. Everybody's teaching how to be blonde and get relaxed on the same day. I don't play like that because one wrong move for the customer that's like somebody I know just went and got a butt job. Literally, the booty went flat. 
So then they went out the country. Then they got an infection. Like one wrong move, her booty went flat. Why? And she made so much money. Don't do it. I'm telling you, this is real life. People out here, don't play. Just because you can, it doesn't mean that you do it for everybody. And I stress this stuff, guys, because the industry is really loud with a lot of interesting theories. And y'all got to look at that book. The book will tell you. You know what I'm saying? Like, do the science. There's a science to here. So listen, I'm going to go rinse her off. You guys can see. Um, rotate for me this way. You guys can see, like, her edges are straight. She's not burning. We're good. You guys, okay, so comments in the, send some comments if you have any questions. I'm going to go ahead and rinse her out and put the neutralizer and just shampoo her hair, okay? So follow me. You guys, if you have any questions so far, put them in the comments. Okay, girl. Yes, I'm so excited about it. Let me give you guys some music. If you have a break, I mean, if you have a question, yes, people are afraid to think for themselves. Yes, Elizabeth, we got to think. You are the scientist. You are the creator. Guys, you're so powerful. Oh, my God, you're so powerful. And so understanding that, understanding that is major because then you create a universe for yourself in your community that is just powerful. You make the kind of money you want. You attract the kind of clients you want. And life is great. Oh, yeah. Hey. So we're going to take a break. Be right back.
Because, like I said, the bonds are still shaping. So, we're going to give that like one more minute. Rinse twice. I mean, shampoo twice. Um, when I shampoo a partial, I put the neutralizing on first. Work it through. Just the areas that um, need neutralizing. And then I, on the area that didn't get neutralized, I use the shampoo that I would normally use for that. So, a lot of you guys make it. it it's a time-saving thing. You don't want to do neutralizing, neutralizing. Moisture, 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 rinse. Like, no, I do neutralizing, and then I, on the top of with the moisturizing, give it a good wash or shampoo. Then I do it again. And can you get a firm from a professional store or order from the company? Both. So at your local private, um, where it's a hairdresser's only type of store, and then you can order from the company website, I'm sure. Um, but I would totally go with a reliable source, which would be like Cosmoproc, or Armstrong McCall, or what's the other one called? Cosmoproc, Armstrong. There's another one I can't remember. REA. Um, you want to go with a professional store. Uh, I do like Affirm. They have really good products. Influence is my favorite. Affirm is second. I don't really care for Design Essentials. It doesn't do, it's a hit and miss. It's always been a hit and miss ever since I've been using this before I moved to LA. I'm just not a fan that much to where I want to invest. Um, I like Influence because it's a high quality line. Um, they just need things shipping together because it's a pain in the ass to order products when you live on the West Coast. I used to live in Dallas and I had Influence because Ben would come every day 
and hook. I mean, every week and hook me up. So, and he will mail me stuff. He been in Dallas mails quicker than the company. I can't stand their shipping, and it literally makes me not want to give them my money because they act fuddy duddy when I call. Because y'all know I'm nosy. I call corporate and give them several ways that they can be bigger. They don't listen to me because I told them they should have online stores for hairdressers so that as a licensed professional, they do the shipping, but I have the store and I sell the products. If I launched an online influence store on my freaking YouTube channel, I would be selling to customers and to stylists as a distributor. Like I literally could blow that thing up. They were like, mm, no, I said, mm, small thinking. Y'all know Blockbuster ended because of small thinking. Anyway, um, let me go. Sophia, really? Yeah, Sophia is a corporate like giant, right? I love her, her, her mindset. I love what she does for a living. Her, her, her avenue is so brilliant, and I love what she does for corporate companies. Um, she is just a hawk. Like she knows business, right? And she knows how to manage and uh, look at revenue and numbers. And 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 she's just um, she's an amazing CEO, like minded. Like I mean, she's just amazing. She's an exec. So. I really want her to do something for my CEO stylist class because I love having with my clients that are in the corporate world because this stuff that we're I'm teaching is actually like this is general business and this is what they do. And I love them because they handle like millions and bill. One of my clients, Nita handles like $24 billion budget. But I know you do like something, mil, some what? 40 million. 40 million. Y'all, can you imagine looking at a spreadsheet talking about let me manage this 40 million today? Mm -mm, I can barely get my list six figures together. <laughs> But I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So this lady is a B. So I'm centric. That was the other one, Elizabeth. Okay, let me go shampoo her hair. Take a short break. I'll be right back.
She goes, watch my shape of that tree. <laughs> and it's like, so she doesn't give her the treatment. That's because she said, that's how I like
I use a couple things. I use, here's knowing the hair textures. I mix a firm, let me get that one too. After I shampoo the hair with uh, the Affirm Nourishing Shampoo, and I did the neutralizer and all that kind of stuff, I then use, I love Matrix. I used to work for this company. Their integrity and their company as a whole is, is magnificent. So this is their Mega Sleek um, Shampoo, and it's the Total Results line. Um, the Mega Sleek, I love this because it literally helps control frizz. It has humidity blocker. And so does the Thermo Smooth. And L'Oreal makes all of this stuff. And their smoothing products, um, like you guys know, uh, damn it, I can't think of the name of it. My favorite smoothing product by Raycon, they don't even have it anymore, but, it, but it's the same company. L'Oreal makes it all, so that's why I do use, I hate Bazzani, but I do like, uh, I ain't going to say hate. No, I, do, I don't like it. Um, but I do like their Thermo Smooth Shampoo because it's very similar to the one that Raycon had, but they discontinued it. And I feel like it's the same. Also, Purology has a shampoo that's in a copperish uh, bottle, too, that is a smoothing shampoo. All of these, I used to do Silk Out, Silkiest Hair in Dallas. I did it with this. So, for my natural clients, that's what I use. For natural hair, that is what I use. Let me close these police. I swear I live in the hood. Every day. Oh my goodness, girl. It's always something with these little uh, mental places downstairs. Anyway, so guys, those shampoos are insanely amazing because they help smooth the hair out. And so it aids in her hair staying smoother while she's out and about living her amazing life. As a wife, as a businesswoman, as a mother, she don't got to worry about her BBs popping up. <laughs> Put it in layman's terms. We don't like the BBs. So, let me make sure we're in focus. We are amazing. And I just moved it. Did you see it? Okay, so. I'm going to mold her hair. There's a couple things that we could do. I like to um, blow dry. I like to mold. It just depends. So for, for um, this class, a lot of you guys have asked it about molding. Her natural hair, when I just mold it, and let her sit there the entire time, it still works. It's curly, and, but it still works. Um, but sometimes I'll go through, halfway through and blow dry the top, just to like, cause it's so much hair. So I am gonna use the Influence Foam Wrap. I love it, I buy my own bottles because I retail this. And so I'm going to Put this on her hair. A lot of you guys, I can tell when you're doing your mold, you're too scary. Put the product on the hair, okay? Y'all see how I'm, this is sud. I'm sudsing it up. Now, depending on the hair texture, if they have little fine skinny hair where like, if you blow, it's gonna fall apart, don't put that much. You gotta learn hair textures, okay? You gotta study textures because when you understand the texture of hair, excuse me, when you understand a texture of hair, then you understand how a product will relate. So if I just confused you because I talked about the different shampoos that I use, it's really because you really gotta study um, hair texture. Because understanding hair texture really tells you what products to use. If a product has, if it's oil-based, you already, this is an easy one. If it's oil-based, we already know that we don't want to put it on somebody who has super skinny hair. And guys, let me tell you a little something my mentor told me years ago, 2011. He said, women with fine hair don't need to be reminded that they have fine hair. He said, but every woman wants to be skinny. He said, so if you could take some, a woman with fine hair and tell her that it's skinny, 
she feels better. And we want our clients to feel good. So we call it skinny hair. And so all I'm doing is the same molding technique, following with my hand. And you see how when I say it anchors, because this hair is straight, it's staying flat. And so I'm taking the, I'm dividing and conquering the hair here. I'm taking it and smoothing it down. Okay? Same thing here. All I'm doing, I use that first comb to kind of break it up. The thing about those shampoos is that they loosen up the curl pattern. Her hair was much curlier, but I used the shampoo and I just let the conditioner sit for a second to further smooth the hair out. You gotta have product in order to make this happen. I'm dividing and I'm conquering. Okay? So, I'm going to make sure this is combed out. Before I put the product in the top, I kind of take my time to see what the hair is doing. I've got it kind of loose. This is the thickest part. So I don't put a lot of product up there because I why? Because I want this to dry fast. For one, not that the product will not make it dry fast, but the less it has, the more airy it is, the quicker that'll dry. Because I already know I have to, my iron is what's gonna give me the smoothness that I need. So what I'm focused on is making sure that her sides, three quarters of an eye right, y'all know that's my magic area. I like to make sure that that area is nice and flat. Okay. I got a client. She can't stand foam wrap on her. I think it's hilarious. I'm like, stop getting your hair done. Because <laughs> she always like, oh, I just feel so gross. So dramatic. So listen. When I come around to the front, I always make sure, remember that hollow factor, three quarters of an eyebrow. I always make sure I pull a little bit down. Okay, pulling that down into the mold to make sure that I don't do too many waves on um, on curly hair because we don't need no support in that. We got enough waves that are natural. What I do is make sure that the hair has the factors that I talked about in the Halley factor because that's important in the end picture. So I just make sure that her face is framed appropriately. Because guess what? If you dry the hair sticking up, you're going to have a hard time getting the hair to lay down. Because remember, Heat shapes the hair. Okay? So, I just want to make sure that the gaps in the important areas, I don't like the hair to look bald. I don't like the hair to um, look funny. So now that I have this all combed out, I'm going to put a little foam wrap starting at the back of the head. And I'm just kind of laying that down. And then I'm going to comb that through. Spread it out. You guys see how that's laying? So now, I get the foam on the tips of the hair so they don't get frizzy. So now she's ready to go under the dryer. Okay? So... 
My clients are so, they know I be OCD about how they hold their head. <laughs> you have to, you have to hold your head nice and neat. And somebody's going to say, what about the client who has like the African texture or like my texture? If a client comes to me with my texture here, I tell her, girl, stop it. Stop. That's stupid. When I try to mold this kinky stuff, it does not lay. It's just a joke. It does not stay. I don't have time. to. I've had to press my hair. And then my little natural curls would come back in the back on one little piece. Like, I just think that's just dumb. Like, go get a wig. I'm that I'm I do tell them, I be like, ma'am, that's unrealistic. You can get it today and it'll be gone tomorrow. Then you're gonna be calling to my hair didn't last. A lot of times if I do somebody's hair that has texture like this, kinky stuff right here, and they want their hair straightened, then what I do is um, it's just for the day. Like they get it for an event or something like that. But it's a pain in the butt. Mm -mm. One wrong move, a bird fly over the head, poof, pop it pops up. So you guys can see. You guys can see. Put the camera down and just rotate stuff here. You guys see that? I didn't really use any setting lotion. I normally like to use the setting lotion to keep everything moist. Moisture is the key in hair. I love the influence setting lotion. Makes the hair shiny. <coughs> love, love. Okay. So she's gonna go under and we shall return. I'm gonna scoop this back so I can you guys can ask questions. You follow me here. She had to go somewhere. Y'all see she on her neck super still. Still, I get it. It's okay. Yeah, it's still okay? Yep. Okay, yeah. I get it too. <laughs> I don't want you to sit. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, she's going to be under the dryer. Sometimes I wrap her hair up. Sometimes I wrap her hair, sometimes I don't. It just is what it is. Good morning, Kenedric. Hey. Angela says, I always cocktail my shampoos. I love it. I love Retkin. How often do you recommend protein treatments with a relaxer service? Is it every one or every other one? I know too much protein can damage the hair. So... Um, let me, I'm looking at the questions, guys. So yes, I I think that um, every six to eight weeks, there's no thing. Every six to eight weeks, I'm giving my clients a protein or uh, some type of treatment that is a must. Every six to eight weeks, it's a must. Um, you over protein the hair. It really takes like like influence is pure protein. So you can over protein with that if you don't measure. So like I measure, you only can use an ounce. And, and here's, I've, I've used it for so many years. I just put a little bit in my hand, comb it out. A little bit goes so far. So a little bit goes so far. So you have to, the, the, you over protein. If you're not measuring, you're dumping a pure protein onto the hair. Um, if someone uses, like I had a client one time um, who literally used a keratin shampoo, which keratin is a protein fiber. She used the keratin shampoo every other day for like months. And she wasn't telling me. And I kept saying, something is up with your hair. She was on some swab or some mess, right? And that shampoo put so much protein on her hair, just went blah. Like, like keratin treatments. That's too much protein. People with keratin, when they first get it, it's silky and it's amazing. And then over time, you see your new growth grow back and it looks funny. So... The whole thing, uh oh, sorry guys. The whole thing is DCC moderation. Ain't that description? <laughs> so, good morning, good morning. You guys are saying good morning. 
Yes, people are afraid to think for themselves, right? They really are. So you guys have to be the judge. You have to take, be bold. You have to allow, um, you have to step into the light of educating your clients. Sophia said something very interesting and powerful, I think, when, we, when she was at the shampoo bowl. She said, in my area, and she lives in a nice area, right? It's a lot of, it's so much. I, I be, that's just, The other day on Facebook, I said, there's so much money. Hairdressers, there's so much money. And somebody, where is that? I don't see it. Mm. I was like, I'm not going to give you any. Like, the reason why, the reason why um, I said that is because, is because of that thing that Sophia was just referring to. In her area, she said, she's in a woman's group. She's doing a lot. She's like, I just, she, she's watching the hair. Guys, you already know your client needs your business card. Here's the kicker. You have to educate your client on what to do when they're not around you so their hair is always at its best. And guys, what you sell and what the appropriate thing is, um, what the appropriate thing is, letting them know what they should use, giving them the products. Some people say black salons can't retail. Oh, yes, you can. There's so many products to sell. Like, and just because our clients aren't shampooing their hair on a daily basis or weekly basis, like you have to give them the stuff and tell them, keep this at your house for that moment where you can't get to me. It's just as important. I need you to be on the same page with me. I need you to be using the right products because I don't want your hair to fall out. I need you to look good when you're at work, when you're with your man, when you're at home being a mother. You need to look good and feel good. So listen, it's very important that you educate your customers and that you're so OCD about everything that you're doing because you are, you are the, um, what's the word? You're the maestro. You're the creator. You're the educator for your customers. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Let me look at the other questions here. Hold on, y'all. Somebody has the request. This request, every time I try to get the request to work, I see somebody with Pamela has her hand raised. Okay, Pamela, I just invited you. Pam, I just invited you to speak. So I offer um, protein treatment by Influence Proplex. I, I literally live for that product. My favorite ish ever on any texture, any race. My favorite product ever, Influence. Period, point blank, love it. Um, I've saved so many hair lives with that product. Um, I offer uh, the Reconstructor, um, Dudley Reconstructor, a five-in-one by a firm, um, just a basic deep conditioner. Um, that's it. Oh, Olaplex. Olaplex, Olaplex. Give it a number three. Give it a number two. And number one has, you can mix Olaplex, the liquid up with diluted with water, and that's a treatment. So Olaplex is a treatment by itself um, that I really like when I'm doing chemicals. Um, the top, you don't want to be molded smoother because you are going to style it out with more irons. Um, yeah, so I smooth, at the end, I smooth, smooth down the top to make sure that it has the form, but Definitely the key to that part of her head is going to be the uh, flat irons. Very simple. Um, Pam, I invited you to speak, but you're not coming, so I'm going to return you as an attendee. Uh, you guys are so quiet. I don't like it. You need to say something. <laughs> speak now or forever hold your peace. Speak now or forever 
hold your peace. Speak now, forever hold your peace. Hello. I know there's a delay. There's a delay. Oh, wait, Pamela's here. It didn't work. Pamela. No, it's not working. Pamela. That's so cool. I've been trying to get this to work forever. Okay, it didn't work. That never works, I don't know why. Is the reconstructor not a protein treatment? I like influence because that's pure protein, like that's a, I like that. The, the reconstructor is a, it depends on the brand because here's the deal, everybody has a reconstructor. It does have protein. I think all of those things that I'm referring to have protein. So I think there's just different levels. I use, I reach for influence when I want to stop instantly. Um, the Dudley's is an instant stopper as well. Um, oh, hair mender. I love hair mender. I haven't used it in a while, but I used to use it all the time. Um, Google it. Uh, yeah. They're all like a form of protein. I think Influence is the, one of the strongest I've ever seen. And it's a it is just brilliantly made. It stops the shedding. It stops the breakage. It's, it, it's just a fixer. So, yes, they are, there's different levels of protein. Like shampoo have protein in it, right? So you got to be careful. The reason you over protein is if you overdo a product with, with, that has protein in it. So you have to use your judgment. Look at the hair texture and see what you want to, um, what, you, what you want the hair to do. And then you pick the product that suits that. So the hair, if the client isn't in, isn't in like some crazy stress, I may do an influence every, you know, 12 weeks. But in between that, I want to give them moisture treatments and so there's intensive hair mask that different product lines have and so then i want to do that which is all about the moisture i may want to do a scalp treatment um so i'll get like i love paul mitchell has all those different scalp the things that treat the scalp so i'll get those and like cocktail my own little thing where i pour um you know like uh what's the stuff called not sea breeze what is this stuff called it's not in front of me but even sometimes I do sea breeze. Like if somebody has a crazy itchy scalp, I'll put sea breeze on their hair and then put them under the dryer and then put a um, a shampoo, a conditioner that treats dandruff as well and dry scalp and then put that under the dryer. I'll cocktail the hell out of some stuff and just come up with something that speaks to what they need. So I'm still checking questions. I love hair mender, right? Asia, me too, girl. These stations has amazing stuff. I used to love, um, there was, what product line had a humectant shampoo? I can't remember a product. Oh man, that, I mean, not shampoo, conditioner. The humectant conditioner was, un, oh my God, I was in love with it. The hair was so silky. And it only took like this much product. You put it all over the hair and the hair was just so silky. These companies get into business and they don't know how to do business and they go out of business and it's just a shitty mess and it pisses me off. Because these product lines are great and we need to educate our clients and we need to have the right kind of stuff. We need the tools so that we create we can create change for the customer. And so that shit, oh my God, that product looks amazing. Even like this lady, this, oh, I don't see it. This Cleo person, whoever had this product line was onto something. This is naturally made Cleo products. Now you can't find it in the Asia selling it for $20 a bottle. That tells you how valuable this stuff is. But I love this stuff. It's just so much that's out for us. And they don't market. They don't market. They don't know numbers. They don't manage the inventory properly. And the things just go to kaput. Meanwhile, this lady, let me go find my y'all know I preach about this lady every week. This lady makes me so happy. I had housekeepers come yesterday. I think they should come twice a week. Because I can't manage this. Annie Malone. Oh my God. This motivates me every single day. Oh, every single day. 75,000 women entrepreneurs. I'm going to set that goal for myself with, with 
hair. Like I should be able to help 75,000 hairdressers. There's, let me see how many hairdressers it is in the world. Let me do some Googling since y'all ain't asking a good enough questions. Thank you, Elizabeth, for all your questions. She said, coolness. I cocktail a lot. It's good to know that I'm not alone. No, I'm listening, but I'm doing a client. I got you, Toya. New expressions. Asia, that's right. New expressions. Yes. These product lines, are they think so small. And it's like, guys, it's real talk. When you watch freaking, uh, what's it, what's, when you watch, What's this guy? I can't think of his name. The guy who owns Netflix runs. T uh, t I can't think of his name. Anyway, I be watching stuff like that. I go watch these inventors talk about what happened. When you watch him talk about how they put Blockbuster out of business, whoo, that's some boss G stuff. Guess what? Blockbuster was stuck in their own little stories and their own little stuff. And boom, Netflix, Netflix put them out of business. So. It's imperative, it's important. Important, imperative. Okay, so. Okay, y'all, they need my passport. Why? It's too much. Any other questions? We have about 10 more minutes before I check her. You guys are so quiet. Not feeling it. I've never heard of influence until I met you. Can I find it in professional stores? No, that's what I love about it, Angela. Influence is, um, they, they on the come up though. They're doing good. I think they should think bigger than they do. But you know, in our community, it always takes somebody else to tell them before they listen. It's a little old me because I don't send several messages and call the office. <laughs> like, hello, you're missing it. See, I don't follow the beauty industry. I've seen it. I've been 360 around it. I've always been ahead of my time with predicting where things are going. And when it comes, everybody call me like from Dallas now that I'm in LA, they'd be like, you told me I needed to get this. You told me I should do this. You told me. <laughs> so what I'm learning is to focus on me and stop telling everybody what they should do because they don't listen any damn way. And the black community does so bad with updating. Some of y'all in this class, I'm going to call you on your, on your coop. So many people join this class. I'm not a technical person. You be so excited. You want an award because you ain't technical. Meanwhile, one day I'm going to be like, Siri, help me do Like, I'm going to be able to talk to the ceiling. I'm going to be able to just blink and like, I don't know. I'm going to go catch a helicopter on my roof. You guys are not following. Like, I need us as a community to understand that you're going to get left behind the same way Blockbuster did. Some of y'all are thinking like Blockbuster. If I just stick to it, if I just pray, if I just wait on God, ugh, God look at you like this. <laughs> this is what God is doing. When are they going to get it? He gave you the power. He gave you the brain. He gave you the ability. You woke up enough. Take action. Think outside of your box. I literally consume like Harvard Business Review, Tech Crunch. I go watch the people like I watch Bill Gates and Warren Buffett and like the guy who owns Netflix. And Steve Job documentaries. I look at the behind the scenes. I study how Beyonce thinks. I look at Oprah. I want to see a day in the life of these people because that's the mogul that I am. I recognize it before it's ever, before anything is ever present. I'm already identifying myself and relating myself and trying to shape my life so that it can go that way. So you guys, behind the chair is not the only place that you're going to be. I mean, think about it. I just saw Ming Lee. You guys follow Ming Lee, Snob Life, whatever. Like I met her. I talked with her. And she had a, we had a very quick conversation and it was very odd. It was so boss. Like, it was like boss to boss, boom. Like, it was dope, right? But one thing I admire about her is that she is like my age, millionaire, started with nothing. She just closed out her salon. Her salon was like, a, it was so nice. It was such a big deal when she launched it. And she's like, I realize I don't want to manage people because most people don't want to manage. But salon business is no joke and it becomes massive. And there's so much to manage, but people are the worst part because people have mood swings. It's like a daycare. But now she's just doing her own thing where she wants to sell products. She's basically going to have a beauty supply and the girl is going to probably be a billionaire by the time it's done. It's a billion dollar industry. I wish her the best. And it's like, if we don't start getting into things, but first you got to get, if you can't make the money behind the chair, you're not going to just get from behind the chair and then go open up another business and then that's going to work. Because what you're missing is the business sense. And I just want us to do better. And stop with this. I'm not technically savvy. What you don't know 
Google it. Learn how to ask questions because when you start asking questions, they open up doors. You ever took a class and then you learned a concept and then all of a sudden, every book you read, every magazine you see, everything you watch, the concept was there the whole time. Like for real. So it's like you have to constantly be in. There you go. Influence hair care. You can register as a professional. I'll give you guys. Oh, that's what I was going to do. I got ADD. I went on a tangent. I'm, I'm going to give you Ben's number. Ben ships faster than the company do. Sad. So sad. Let me give you guys Ben's number. Tell him I sent you. I need a commission from these people. And here's the deal. Beatrice, you said it right. Opening up a hair store. I think black people opening up a hair store is what should be happening. And black people need to do get their hair from black people. Why in the hell are you going to go to these Asian stores? These people don't give a crap about you. They're giving you old products. There's no integrity in the products. Open up a black hair store and sell influence. You can get it straight from the distributor. The owner of influence is so OCD about making sure that nobody waters down or dilutes his product um, to a point where I think it's stagnant. But I think that um, getting a company, going to a firm, going to influence, going and getting the retail versions of their products and opening up a store, selling lasagna firm influence design essentials. Screw dark and lovely. Who makes dark and lovely? Somebody answer that for me. What company makes dark and lovely? And really, what company makes Mazzani? But at least Mazzani, they try. But what company makes dark and lovely? Somebody answer that. Hmm. What company makes olive oil? What company makes, what's some of these other ones? African pride. White people. And I'm not racist. Let's talk about, this is not about race. This is about understanding diversity. Just because a white company hires a black person doesn't mean that there's diversity. Like, if you ain't living, if the company ain't black, living, walking, sleeping, breathing, this right here, why would I want my customers to just take that and go, no, I want, I love influence. That's a black company. So if they don't, they know our things that we need. That's a high quality product line. You could literally get a small studio and make a hair thing and then have educational courses that the educational courses for the everyday woman is what's going to sell the product naturally. It doesn't put a hairdresser out of business. It doesn't. All that mental thinking, Asians got it sewed up. If we present something different from what Asians have, you know what I'm saying? Black people going to be like, you know what? If you start telling black people the difference and why they shouldn't go to Asian shops, I really want to go like go ham on. I'm sick of it. I was in the Asian store the other day and I love Asians. I love everybody. But I was just like, this guy was, he was like, thank you so much. And I just looked, it was like Saturday. I'm watching around, looking at the store. My people are running around asking these Asians about a hair product. It makes no freaking sense. And they're all buying all this look. I'm down to get the eyelashes and all that little stuff, right? Okay, whatever. You can get your own makeup line. You can get your own eyelash line. You can get your own and make it the Asian price. And then boom, you in business. And you educate people one by one. You become an evangelist. It's going to work. If there's no, watch Ming Lee. Everybody watch Ming Lee. She's going to, the girl that has just, the, she's a marketing genius. And she will, her, her beauty, she's going to have a beauty supply. I guarantee you. She's going to have makeup. She's going to have clothes. She's going to have everything she loves in that store. And, and all the black people are going to go there. And that's what she should do. Okay. So here's Ben's number. Look, hey, look, Angela said, don't forget. I didn't forget. I was just on a rant. <laughs> Thank you for my, Angela. I need those kind of, uh, I need those kind of, uh, whatever I'm trying to say, reminders. Pam says, one of the biggest problems with most hairdressers is they are so into money hungry, taking your money and not knowing their hair theory and taking the time to study your hair and maintain it. Exactly, Pamela. That's what I was talking about earlier. Understanding that book. When you understand the book, and hair, you just come from a different place. Okay, let me see. You're almost done, guys. Okay. Let me find... I just put Ben number in the comments. 
I watched the video of the influence owner. He walked into the beauty supply. Right. Took the product off the shelf. Right. Exactly. Mazoki. Hope I'm saying your name right. L'Oreal. L'Oreal. And I know because I went to the company where they make, I'm just looking at all these products and they get these black women with weaves on the box talking about relaxers. I'm sorry. That's not her hair. Like, that doesn't make any sense. And then the Asians get it and they buy they buy all of those products and they store them in a hot storage in New York and just keep it there for years on end and then they sell it to you. The product has no value. Like, ugh. Ugh. I think I'm about to relax my hair. I wish one of y'all was here so y'all can do my hair. Ugh. Sometimes I just get tired. The reason why my hair is natural because I don't, I don't, these people do horrible hair out here. Money everywhere and they just doing horrible hair. Okay. Any other questions, guys? You're just so quiet. 75,000 women entrepreneurs. She trained 75,000 women entrepreneurs and gave diamond rings for five years of service. Oh, I love it. I'm about to do this. I'm about to be like her. I got to figure that out. This is my why. This lady did this in 1926. And we said we can't. She created her own college. This is going to be the CEO stylist business school. Oh, I just got excited. Y'all, what if I did this? And then I'll be a part of history. <laughs> the CEO stylist business school. I'm about to, this, is a, this, is, this is amazing. A generous entrepreneur. Hair, care, and beauty. I just got excited. Talk about vision. What? Y'all better get y'all some visions and some goals and a plan. Need a plan. So, let me stop scratching. I think I'm going to get a relaxer. I'm going to teach one of my clients how to do the hair. Hey, you guys. Let's see. Who is Ben? I missed that part. Ben is a distributor of influence. Beatrice, my goal, my point was, I went on a rant. <laughs> but my point is, you can totally, you could do it. You can have a product line and be successful. I met a lady, she sells nothing but products. She made, She said her numbers were insane. I'll put it that way. Her numbers were insane, all from products. Rihanna's getting ready to launch a, an entire product line Globally, most people start in the U.S. and then they start, they go global. That girl is starting out global. That's the kind of power she has. And it's just a prop, like all she's doing is selling lipstick and makeup. That's now great. Louis Vuitton is making it. <laughs> that does make a difference. Well, her partnership with Puma for 50 months. Right. I was at the yard. The line was out the door for her new collection. Right. On Fifth Avenue. Yeah. They were lined up in the Puma store or in the athletic store to buy her. Rihanna is just a beast. But my point is, come on, she yeah, sells physical, yeah, she sells physical products very well. Never start a business, and this is what I'm talking about at noon uh, on the CEO Stylus. Never start a business thinking about the other people like that. If you have a passion for something, you just gotta go for it. You know what I'm saying? Validate that it's a need in the market and go for it. Because there's always going to be some naysayers and your vision was not given to them. And you can exist 
with in conjunction with somebody else. You totally can. I can have a product line and so can you. So let me get the blow dry already. Her hair is pretty dry. Take your time and allow the blow dryer to just get it a little smoother. You guys see that? You guys see how thick her hair is, right? <laughs> she got a lot of hair. So, all I did was take the iron through. I'm just taking the iron through. And that's it. So this is very simple. If she had, if her hair, sometimes her hair is like, I mean, I don't know, it just depends on the mood of her hair. Her hair becomes. Sometimes I have to do more, like tie her hair down a whole lot. Sometimes I don't. Today it cooperated. I think because it missed me. <laughs> Ooh, yes, it did. <laughs> so I'm just kind of feeling to make sure this area is a little cool. It's cooperating. Good hair day. Which one do you want? See, guys, what you guys think? What y'all want to see? Curly or straight? Y'all got 30 seconds to answer. We haven't done, we did curly last time. How was that? Did we know we did straight, did we? We did so much, but I can't remember. The last one was straight. The last one was straight. Oh, yeah, because you asked one for you. Oh, you was a how was the movie? I had that shot. Because I was in New York. Yeah, I was the wedding day. It was good. It was raining in, in uh, Washington, D.C. It was good. Because we did it in D.C. and New York City. Did you go to the museum? Yes. Oh, my God. I want to go. It is. You guys have to go to that. Um, African American Museum. This summer. Right. In Washington, in Washington, D.C. It mm -hmm. is a top-notch museum. Is four, it? Four floors. It is beautiful. Ugh. I can't wait. Very educational. It's, 
it's it's awesome. I can't wait. You guys been for a while, wasn't it? I love it. And they said that's what's happening. That's why they're selling out. It's because everybody, everybody because they're staying more than the average one to two hours in the museum. Wow, it is that awesome. I mean, I can't wait. Matter of fact, I think I'm doing. I come back to Spain. This is my next Yes, my brother went. This time here, trick. Got to feel through it. Yep. The reason why I'm not using like my Ferrari dryer is because at my house, the Ferraris, all my hair stuff, the salon stuff is too strong for my house. So mm -mm. it's not happening. Straight, they want to see your hair straight. Ain't she, they say you got the perfect hair for short hair. Isn't she? She's up, like, yeah. So let's see. What I do is kind of feel through, figure out which way I want it. Do I want it to go this way? Do I want it to go? I think I like it going that way today. Love the African American Museum. I love it. Simone says, so the majority looks like it's straight. The straight was first. So, I'll do her next one. When she get her relaxer. Oh, what you want? You do you got? You don't care. She don't ever. <laughs> she don't be caring. Blow your head down. Okay, it so always looks nice, so it doesn't matter. I feel like we always do the straight hair on people. I mean, curly hair. So what I'm gonna do is start at the middle, the the back top. I'm taking this iron. I'm just gonna take it straight up. I put the uh, Influence, I'm sorry, Mazzani Thermosloop, because she's natural. And I don't, I, I like, I, that is a good little topping for the hair. The wax stick, where is it? I don't know. You guys, I got this from somebody in Dallas. This is some old olive oil, get a little grapeseed oil, but actually, uh, Samate, who was a hairdresser, I mean, he's a distributor in Dallas. He had gave me some, he had, he gave me some, uh, Gracie oil once. And I don't know what company it was by, but that was my favorite. And so when I saw this at my mom's house, I was like, what is this? I saw Gracie and I just got excited. So I've been testing it out and I actually liked it. It's on olive oil. Y'all did good on that. This is the TG. I'm just rubbing it on her, on her edges. Look down for me. And all I'm going to do, guys, is smooth her hair out. No brain surgery. I still start at the back top of the head. And silk out the hair. Let that heat do the work. Her hair is thick. It looks so nice and shiny. I'll give you guys a different view. Uh oh, I'm making you dizzy. Hopefully that's better. Oh, well, yeah. So with her hair, um, good observation, good thing. Sophia want me to share with you guys. Um, I'm trying to do this so I can do your hair is not with the camera. So what I did was, um, so I did some highlights on her hair. 
super pretty, was blonde, but she works corporate, so she's like, it's a bit much for what I got going on right now. It was so cute. She like a little Barbie to me. So what we did was, well, I went out of town, so she couldn't tone it down, so she had to go somewhere else to tone it down. Some of y'all be scared for clients to go somewhere else. Y'all, don't be like, don't be that, don't be that. I can't be scared, because I'm always gone. So anyway, um, she went somewhere, and they put uh, a color on her hair, but it was like we had just did a double high lift, and then she went and put a permanent on top. So what happened was, what happened was um, it was just too much chemical. And so we spent the next four weeks just treating. I was rotating. Um, I just did, oh, you could do the Olaplex, you could do Olaplex every week, the number three. And so uh, I was just doing the Olaplex on her hair. And then I did the, the initial thing that I did was influence. And I just washed the hair to make sure, I washed the shedding to really see, um, you know, what the hair was doing. And it was literally like 911, <laughs> low key 911, to make sure that, because we didn't want to lose her hair. I'm so OCD about the, the integrity of hair. And so guys, she she was so into treating her hair and getting it back to right health because I educate her on, first of all, she cares about her hair. And I should have went, by the way. So that was just a <laughs> desperate move. Well, and our clients have to do that sometimes, though, you know? So I told her, was like, okay, let's just fix it. And that's why I like influence, because my first go-to thing was influence. And so I just make sure that um, you guys, the key here that I go for, I love all the products are important on especially her hair texture, because... That's really the part that smooths the hair. And so I use the flat irons up until a certain point, and then I use the Marcel. But this is, if you need super detailed walkthrough of a silk out, there is a video in the short hair group, it's called Silk Out. And all we do is just, I talk you through it one on one. Me ain't you. So, told you you're doing I'm trying to get to where y'all can still see. Angela says, I purchased Paul Mitchell working spray, but I'm not sure how to use it. Oh, so if you wanted to, so the working spray Paul Mitchell, you would spray it. Like if I was doing, I wanted her hair to have a little more hold at the top. I would use that. I love the Influence Spritz, Spritz or even the Clio uh, Spritz because it still does the job. And so what you want to do is just spray that on the hair. Okay, this is a horrible setup. Look at that. What you want to do is spray that on the hair uh, before you curl. I don't like this setup at all. At all, at all. So, I would have just sprayed it before I curl. Yeah, I do not. Let me see, can I just be honest with y'all? Live is fun because I get to talk to you. But I think that the quality of class is better pre-recorded. It's just better. Because it's so mapped out. It's so to the point. What y'all think? Comment. Let me know. You like live or pre-recorded better? I think the, pre the live, that, that's blurry. I don't like the quality of it. And I've hired so much and paid for so much. And I still don't really care for the quality. The next, the girl, the next live stream people, they're like $10,000. I said, dang, somebody gonna come install some? <laughs> Just for some software.
Maybe I'll do like live. I think I may change it to where the basis of the product is a certain system. And then the live is just fine. It's just what you do. Because I don't like quality. I don't like putting out bad quality stuff. So. What y'all think? Y'all the users. What's your favorite class? What's your favorite way to consume the class, to watch it? Yeah, I don't like it at all. I can see. It's so dark. I just think that's crazy. You guys love it all I do. All right, now hot enough. Really, I can use a bigger one because that's a longer piece of here. Let's see. I'm trying to give you guys the desk. This is so dark. No, it doesn't make the hair crunchy. Live, I pretty much get the picture. I know, but I want you to do more than get the picture. Get the air, like, I, yeah, y'all give me some feedback. I think SHBL needs a face, a facelift for sure. I'm just, I've been debating on where I want to go with it. It won't make the hair crunchy, Simone. You would have to put a whole lot. A working spray is just very soft. So it's like, it's not going to make the hair crunchy at all. Hold your hand up for me. I live demo gives more inspiration of learning. All right, y'all like it. I love it. Cause I will get that ten thousand dollar thing next time. Cause I don't like this quality, so I think that I guess cause cause in order to get something from a pre record, you do have to be a little self self starter. Cause the whole thing is like if you don't practice, hell, inspiration don't get the you got the. I just think the whole thing with live is like the focal is the quality. So I want you to be able to see, but I get what you mean, like me talking through the different steps. I agree, Elizabeth, but live always allows you to ask questions. Got it. So the question is in the coach. That was really the um the main part that I focused on originally was the questions. But I guess for me, because I'm so visual, I need to be able to see. And if I don't like what I see, I don't know, I just think I get disengaged. But apparently that's just me. Okay, you later. I like high quality. I'm gonna go find me somebody that will help me out. See, when I'm lost, guys, I just find an expert. Somebody gonna give me what I'm looking for. Y'all see that sheen in the hair? It's so shiny. It's silking out. Okay, y'all like live? I'll do more live. I, in my mind, I'm like, don't you want pre-recording so you can actually 
Stop listening to my random stories. <laughs> Do y'all love it? I love it too. Shake it up, the SHBL. You guys see how I'm letting this iron? Pull through. Boom. Y'all see how I'm working it out? Look at that sheen. Look at that sheen, you know? That could be a rap song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could be a rap song, I'm just saying. It's gorgeous. So I'm just gonna keep going. So for this section, I'm smoothing it out. You know? It's so soft. It's so pretty. Dividing and conquering. I'm silking out the hair. And then I'm just going to bend the iron slightly just to bevel the hair. Nothing major. When you're right above the ear, just lift the hair right when you go in, away from the ear. Put your hand in the way. You don't have to worry about burning somebody. Okay? So now we're ahead. We're right here on the side. Beatrice says, I love the live, but I also like the pre-recorded. Can you go back and watch the live videos too? So we can go back and watch the live videos too. So either way. I agree, Elizabeth, but live allows you to ask questions. So I guess it all works. So I'm just going to keep it mixed in. I don't know. I'll take a survey for you guys. We have over, there's 400 or something. I was looking last night, 441 um, short hair members. Some have gone, some have come. So that's dope in, a, in like a short amount of time. 400 hairdressers. But you know what I noticed? Some people join my group and then they try to go start you teaching my stuff. I saw several of that, which I think is very funny. And I know that it's a low entry point, but it's $19. That's about to snip, switch it up. That way at least you jump in, you jumping in for 100 plus to steal. <laughs> Cause some people are still in, and they go on their YouTube channel and I can tell like they started their step by step after I put my step by step. They take the language app. I'm like, what is going on? Who wants to just steal like that? People do. I don't go to somebody's stuff and steal. You can be inspired, but you don't just steal. That's just like unoriginal. Ain't nothing new. So I'm gonna do some waves. Other people gonna do some waves. How many wave classes have you seen? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Everybody do their own version, but I don't try to go like study their stuff and then do my, that's just like, ooh. You pull out a mannequin and you create and you figure out what works. What, what is your, what's your story you want to tell? And you do that. You don't steal. I'm just going to go through and silk it out. And so her ends, really that's where that old color is. So I'll have to bring her in and show you guys how I cut that off. I've been slowly trying to cut out those old highlights and stuff so that 
We don't gotta look at that anymore. But the ends are a little frizzy just from the color. And use that comb. Putting the comb in the hair creates even distribution. Turn out the lights and heat, baby. I don't know why I just started singing. ADD. So, as you can see, I love the humor when you know it motivates me. Even when you're even more you're so funny. Thank you. So you guys like it both. That's good to know. You know what? Here's the deal about business. I always need to ask you guys what's working. I don't want to go 100 miles an hour on something that's not serving you because I don't do this to toot my own horn. I just wanted to help people because I literally, I created this. I should put that on my website. I went to a class just because I thought something was new under the sun. And I was so disappointed in the class and it, it had been my 50th class. I had been going to different um, like Instagram people famous classes and I was not happy. I was like, why did they just charge me $500 and they used a PCJ or a lack of, I mean, it, everything was so tacky and I don't know. They tried it. But I was disappointed and people are in this class hoping to change their hair careers and like it was just half done. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do my own because I know this stuff. I ain't been to one yet that I haven't, you know what I'm saying? Like this was, hair was not new to me. I've been doing hair since I was 13 and some things I think are innate and that I know how to do naturally. But I also know how to explain it. And if I don't, I'm gonna work my hardest to figure it out. And I'm not gonna make hairdressers feel like they can't achieve what I've achieved. And a lot of those classes, people were speaking like they was on top of the mountain and we was the peasants. I ain't like that. I don't wanna go to no class where I feel like you're unattainable or your level is, un I don't like that. It didn't feel good and I just watched people. And so what I did was I was in the class and I just said, I'm gonna hang around and just listen to the comments. It's so, when you listen to, oh, that's so powerful, y'all. When you listen to what your clients are talking about and they're off time, that's your money. People talk about what they wish they had, what they wish they had. So I sat there and listened to them hairdressers. They were so inspired by that celebrity person, right? And this actually happened in more than one celebrity person, but they were inspired by that person's story, but they didn't learn. They had no way to retain it. They were like, whenever this relationship started to die down, because we all went to go eat, they were kind of like, ooh, so I can't wait to get back. But then when you get back, where do you start? They didn't know. They didn't realize they didn't know. They were just like, I don't know, it was weird. You know what I'm saying? So I felt, that's not fair. First of all, you need a replay. And the person kept, who had the class kept saying, turn your cameras off. Well, damn, I paid $500 to get in this dog on class. Can I at least have a little iPhone replay so I can, you know, try to reduplicate what I just spent $500 on? So I was so frustrated, and I didn't like that everything seemed. And one thing about, like, I'm very passionate about this, because even with my CEO Styles class, I said, and I and I, my mentor told me, Keisha, it doesn't matter what you said. Like, acknowledge it and move on. Because I took my original plan for CEO stylist, level one is $997. $997. Why? Because the information that I give you will create that revenue back for you and some. And then it's the same as a business course. And it's, it's like you pay $18,000 for hair school and you steady paying for more classes, right? So what I want to do is give you something that is just insanely powerful and, and teaches you how to think so that you can actually grow and change your life into something that you just dreamed of. I know how to do that. And so I'm not going to cheapen it and make it, you know, whatever. But then what I realized is I heard one of my mentors say, I said, that is so true. She said, you know what? She said, I want to help so many people. And she said, I don't want to be unreachable. She, and so what had happened was her brand had got to where only certain types of people could deal with her. And that wasn't her original goal. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to take a certain amount of people for a certain price just so that I can literally blow it out the water. They are going to be screened like 
It has to be a certain type of person um, that's red, you know what I'm saying? That has a certain mind frame for change. And then it becomes the 997 um, business school. So, and I was so not gonna do it because my mentor was, I was like, well, I told everybody on the last class, you know, that it's not gonna be, and it's like, no. And let a certain amount of people in and blow everybody's world up. Give, because I know I can give and I know I can help you change your life. I can't change your life, but I can give you information and concepts that will start the conversation, the thought process, the attitude, the habits that will create change in your life. Um, and but yeah, I started almost here. I started that class. I was like, I don't want to be unattainable. And I don't like when I go to a class and people are so. That's like buying VIP with Beyonce and then she look at you like you're a peasant. The hell you just spent $3,000 to sit at the front and she'll even come shake your hand. I remember one time I went to our Kelly concert. We paid all this money to be at the front. And he called everybody from the back up to the front. I said, well, hell. <laughs> if I had known that, I would have just walked in here and sat in the back and waited for them to run everybody to the front. I did not like that at all. So my point is, I started this class because I was just tired of that illusion, that secrecy, that black people in the list, that crabs in the barrel stuff. You want everybody to pay you a high dollar ticket, but you're giving them bits and pieces, leaving both thirsty, hungry. And it's her prerogatives, it's other people, other hairdressers' prerogative. Because at the end of the day, like I said, I paid 18000 for over school, and that really should have been $5,000. Because they teach the focus was stay bored, you know what I'm saying? And some basic stuff that you could have found on YouTube that didn't that doesn't re, you could do it without a license. So they should that's beauty schools should really just teach how to pass their board. Teach you all your basics, teach you the chemicals and stuff, and you just learn how to pass their board. But anyway, I don't want to be unapproachable, unattainable. I want everybody to win. I want to create 75,000 hairdressing entrepreneurs who go and do affect their little part of the community, their little part of the world. And so that's what the CEO Stylist is all about. Short Hair Boot Camp is all about. Everything is all about um, education and sharing and growing and hopefully changing the mentality of our community because Hairdressers got some super mental stuff they got to work out. And the whole thing is you just got to be open for it. You just got to be open for it. That's it. So I'm just silking her out. I love this chocolate color hair she has. Probably what we're going to do again when we do the relaxer. Do a chocolate color. You guys see, I'm just silking it out. No hair left unsilked. <laughs> That's all. So pretty. We can take it off the face. But I'll get to that in a second. Let me just do this other side and then we're going to be done. It's so moisturized. I love moisturized hair. I love healthy hair. I think that we have to have a little bit more, uh, uh, what's the word? We just need to care more because this is a, like I said, it's a dang person. So we cannot be just doing any other kind of thing, trying to get people in and out, lining them up like an assembly line. Where's the people, where's the love? Love is in the hair, honey. We change the way people view themselves. That is some magic. That's like what surgeons do. And then guess what? You get off the table like my friend did, a booty fall out. She got a booty job and it's just flat. <laughs> she ain't my friend. She's an associate. But I'm just like, oh my goodness, how devastating. Your booty flat and then you have to leave the country and go get something else done. And then you're over there, you get stuck because you got an infection. It's like, what the hell? You come back, you have changed your body physically and still not happy. Meanwhile, we get somebody a haircut and 
I swear I'm Holly Berry with my hair relaxed. You can't tell me that I ain't the flyest thing on the planet, okay? And I didn't, didn't have to take no knife and surgery. Lipstick, eyelashes. Ooh, I think I'm baby boop with some lashes on. I just turned into another person. And so we are we are literally just as, as impactful as a surgeon. If we had have gotten to, if your mentality is positive and powerful and you're so full of empowerment and you get to these celebrities and while you're doing the hair, you can say things that literally change their mindset. Man, oh man. You know what I'm saying? Like it's so powerful because they're influencers. So then they don't have to go think they got to get bigger butt. Like, look at K. Michelle. She hates that she got her butt that big. And she's telling everybody, no, don't do it. Something in her told her she wasn't enough to get that, y'all. You can say what you want. I just want to get butt. Just keep listening. I know if I had a little booty, y'all would get a little plump. Ain't nothing wrong with love plumpness. Okay, whatever. But when you start getting stuff out of proportion that ain't even naturally normal, you ain't never seen a human just, but like, you're trying to feel something. You try some something is telling you whatever you have is not sufficient for wherever you think you're going or trying to be. Yep. And so here's what's funny. She said Sophia is y'all telling me she's a brilliant mom. I really want to interview her. Keep telling me that. I need to make it happen and stop talking about it. But um there's a the market is wide open what she's saying like there's so much opportunity for us to be loud proud real hair hairdressers because what have the 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 weave industry man please how many weave videos do you see a day on instagram anthony cuts always popping up he do all these do all these makeovers and weave everybody braiding in here and putting it away man rock your crown i think you should be i mean nothing wrong with weave at all but women are going to weed because they really do think that this, that is the solution because you are not loud enough. And so, okay, here we go. I've done pretty cool on my YouTube channel. I've touched almost 2 million on my YouTube channel. It's crazy when I even think about that. But I'm not loud enough. So the whole thing is, Mingly said it right. It's best marketer wins. Ooh, girl. That's cute, girl. So Ming Lee said it right, like the best marketer wins. And that is really the story. I mean, look what she did. Her Snob Life Studios is closed, but look at how many people she impacted in her city. So the whole thing is you guys got to play with it and push it down, push it back. I'd be like looking, trying to see how I want it to flow. Um, Sophie has like a New York type vibe too. So I'm always looking at the person, their lifestyle. But yeah, like we have so much power, guys. And we just want the hair to be soft and healthy. And there's nothing wrong with adding hair. There's nothing wrong with playing with hair extensions, but educating the everyday woman and letting her know that she's enough, even if she don't have Kim Kardashian booty or her Holly Berry nose, she can rock her hair. So what does that mean for you? You've got to step your hair skills up. So you guys, of course, that's what you're doing. That's why you're in this class. And you've got to step your business skills up because women need you in your area, wherever you are. Listen, I don't care if you put me in Utah. I will turn them white women here out. And let me just tell y'all, I ain't gonna go there. They don't really, they don't really know a lot of black people put it that way. <laughs> and I probably have the most books alone. I guarantee you, give me a year. Matter of fact, give me six months. I can turn Utah out. And I know because I've been there. Same thing in Montana. Montana, they were not used to seeing black people. The lady was just looking at me. By the end of it, everybody was like, we love Keisha. Why? Because even in white salons, the issue is the same. It's not a, the, the issue of hairdressers not educating people on how to maintain what is actually growing out of their scalp 
It's the same in every culture. My a lady came to me downstairs and she said, Keisha, do you think my hair? She said, my hair. She's like a white lady. She said, what about me? Can my hair be healthy? Yes, it can. The fact that the conversation got, it's just not loud enough. So no matter who you are, where you live, where you from, some of you guys are so scared to move. That's cool, because some of y'all trying to get like a certain dream to happen in Kansas. You can't have Chicago dream, I mean, uh, New York City dreams, and then live in, in Kansas. Like, it doesn't make any sense. That's not realistic. So make sure that your number goals are realistic. And if they're not, you got to do like I did. I moved. And not because I don't have no kids. Somebody um, just told me that they moved here. They have kids. They got a husband. They don't have no, they just going to work it out. And so you have to, um, you have to work it out. You got to be willing to do something different. You got to be willing to start the conversation. You got to be willing to look weird and feel silly. But, um, you know, step out. First live class. Love this. Love you. Very pretty. Thank you, Shivali. Thank you. Thank you. So, you guys, she is uh, ready for the world. And this is a corporate executive, guys. Big wig. Managing $24 million. $50 million. Who said $40 million? I don't know. Something. That's a lot. That's all I know. She's brilliant, right? So, I have to serve her and make sure that her hair is in a great condition. She's in a boardroom. I'm sure it's full of men. You know what I mean? So, she's got to be strong. She's got to be you know, confident from within. The last thing your client needs to worry about when they go to work and they have their children, when they're with their <laughs> husband, the last thing you want to worry about is, you know, oh my God, my hair. And so, and she can speak, I'm, I don't have to speak for her. No, I always get consistency yeah. and I enjoy coming to the kitchen show. Yay. And then and my hair comes out like this, whatever she does. <laughs> Lean in just a little bit, look down. You guys can see. It's just nice and soft. It's beautiful. And all we did was just silk it out. You just want to go, like have fun. It's soft, run your hands through it. I don't do those um, hard necklines. I don't like that. What I will do is like right, like right here, I will just take the um, clippers and just go up the neck just enough. Just enough to make sure that it's neat and a man ain't like, oh, oh, you know, I don't want that. But we want it to be soft and, and just natural. Nobody wants to, just, like, a man should not, you know, I don't know. Here's the deal. Some people, some people like it. I don't. I like it to be soft. And most of the ladies that I deal with, yes. they, <laughs> there we go. They want feminine as much as possible. Has Sophia written a book? Oh, wow. No. No. She should. I tell her all the time. She's so brilliant. I think you should do that book that you said. Black Women in Corporate. Oh my God. I'm so right. yeah, I'm considering it because it's uh, very difficult to make it to a level reporting into a CEO of uh, corporate America. So I'm in pharmaceutical and I actually uh, manage about $3.5 billion. Uh, Look at that. In a company, but I, I have a budget of $40 million. And it's it's exciting, but this is exciting what you guys are doing too. You take chances and you have to gamble. Whether it's corporate America or entrepreneurship, you have to gamble mm -hmm. and uh, go with your own inner strengths and, and intuition. Because that no matter, there's going to be too many naysayers around what you can't do. All right. So I just enjoy being with Lakeisha. <laughs> I, I will wait on her, and everybody wants to come to her, so I can't even tell everybody who I go to because she <laughs> doesn't take any new clients, and it's a uh, it's a good problem to have, I guess, but I, I need someone else to refer people to because I live near Santa Barbara, California, and uh, there's just no one doing it like she's doing it. So that's why we come when I come as far as I do. Guys, thank you. Look at that. Yay. So you guys check it out. Does Ben sell them? I don't know about Worldwide. Ooh, it looks good. I love that brown. I don't know if I'm going to change your hair because I like that color. I think it's just a richer mocha. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna change. We're gonna do a um, nice mocha. I love it. She's like, whatever. We just cover grays. <laughs> That's our main focus. So you guys can see as the light as she rotates, rotate for me just a little bit. You guys can see. It's just nice and um, natural, shiny. This is an everyday, uh, like amazing mother wife corporate diva. 
And so I this is who is in the salon more than the lady who, you know, you see on these magazines and stuff. Well, I'm gonna pay whatever it takes to right. keep my hair like this. That's right. the bottom line. There is no number that, that I don't ask her about what it's gonna cost me. I just ask her what I need done. And based on what she tells me I need done, I just get it done. So and we have fun. We get yes, we do. We, just, we do have fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, thank her for being um, just being a great sport and just coming in and letting us uh, us play. And I know you guys were probably excited to see um, just the the, the, the natural hair. Um, looks very nice, beautiful lady. Thank you, Latanya. They said beautiful, beautiful. So, thank you, guys. Um, yay, Sophia. Thank you. So, she's going to go now and hang out over there. We're going to, uh oh, sorry. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, it's fun, it's always fun. I love hanging out with you guys. Um, excuse this mirror, I'll just set up. This is just disastrous. I thought it was a good idea, but it's not. So my bad. Uh, we'll have a class next week. And um, I love you guys. You guys are amazing. I love it, she has a beautiful personality. She is insane. I love Sophia, like she's brilliant, guys. I really, for the CEO signs on my YouTube channel, I'm just gonna start interviewing my brilliant friends because, and the best part is, she's my friend. Like she's like my unofficial auntie. I would be just stealing them. I will be like, mm, you have to adopt me. You're never getting rid of me. <laughs> never, never, never. I wanna know her forever as long as I live. So that's the best part is that like literally when you eat, sleep and breathe, your self-development, um, a certain mentality, you attract boss, like amazing gladiator women. And as a young black woman, I need people like her around me. I just, I look up to it. I love it. It's, it she can call me on my stuff, you know what I'm saying? She knows more than me. So um, I just love that she's my client. No, not really. We share. Mm, what we, we share, but I, she's just amazing. I look up to her. And so she's so modest. Her and Nita, her and Nita are two of my favorite clients. But um, I really only kept a handful of people that I know I would know for the rest of my life <laughs> to do hair just because I got to keep my chops up. And um, yeah, that's it. So anyway, um, they said, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. They said, thank you, Sophia. She says, you're welcome, thank Sophia. You. You're welcome. So you guys, we're going to go. Thank you, guys. Um, you're awesome. And I hope you guys have an amazing day. This will be up in the member area. The replay will go out to you. Um, and guys, send me emails. Tell me about what you what, like. Let's make this. I want to. I feel like SHBL needs to step this game up. But y'all be too quiet. Like, do y'all like live better, pre-recorded better? What else do you want to see? Because for me, I'm just like, well, I just feel like only thing I can add now maybe is just bringing in everyday women. Maybe just start doing rant, like just doing a model call and just doing women. That, you know, it's not rehearsed. It's just real life salon. Because I guess that's it. Because I'll be looking at the pre-recorder like, what else do you want to know? I mean, don't, I haven't done dry waves or mohawks. So there are a couple more things I can add in there. But I need y'all feedback. I don't create without feedback. It's stupid. You got to have validation. So anyway, um, thank you. Thank you. I really enjoyed the natural hair transformation. Yay. I love you guys. Come on to the next video. Hey, catch, catch me. I'm getting ready to go live at noon on... Um, about the CEO stylist. So y'all wanna catch me, commit, catch me, catch me. Um anyway, I gotta go last. I gotta send a passport to somebody. Bye. And event.